Welcome to a behind the scenes and sneak peek fe feature into our It's a Fit Life Creation podcast episode. I'm here with Joel Alpert and you guys, this is crazy. So I was supposed to, or I was going to feature a lunch and learn today on social steroids and a four part activity. And there was like 10 people that registered and it's rainy and it's cold and yucky in Atlanta. So I figured, you know, Somebody may show up, a couple people may show up, no one may show up, right? And lo and behold, five, 10 minutes after I walk from our lobby area, a, the lady calls me Joy from the front and says, hey, I have a gentleman here, I'm gonna send him over. And I go upstairs to meet him and funny story, I actually met Joel back in over a year ago at Circle of Firms, Atlanta Tech Village when we hosted a table. And impromptu, he's got an amazing story with marketing, with branding, with strategy. We decided to do an impromptu live. We decided, hey, thanks for joining. We decided to do an impromptu podcast feature. So we're gonna be talking about, well, first, let me introduce Joel. He is a chief light bulb, strategic and creative director, and the founder of marketpoweronline.com. Hi. So welcome, Joel, and thank, thank you. Thank you, it's great to be here. And thank you for being open. And he's gonna be focusing on strategy, on marketing and branding, and I'm gonna bounce into social steroids, and we're just gonna flow. But first, Joel, tell them more about you. So thank you, uh, it's great to be here with you at this uh, completely planned, uh, spontaneous event. Um, so a little bit about me, I was a journalist, I, uh, I'm, a strat I'm a strategist, I work both on the strategic side and the creative side, I work for all kinds of companies, I like the variety, and uh, I like seeing stuff through from the initial strategy side through execution. I think everything counts, and while I'm not an obsessive compulsive, I think that every detail counts. So you know, you can, you can really get it right if you think it through and give it a chance. So, We'll bounce. We both have expertise in, in all these areas, and we'll look forward to uh, bouncing it around and just having this conversation. Yes, I love it. Thank you, and thank you again for being open and spontaneous. And I'm like, you guys, back in the day, I'm so also OCD quality driven that I would analyze, analyze, analyze. But now I've learned to challenge myself more and just be spontaneous. And but I asked Joel, I said, okay, do you really want to do this? Do you want to have some prep time? Because normally, you guys, to do a podcast episode, normally you're at least having a conversation, then a pre-recording call, but sometimes you just gotta be spontaneous. So, with that, let's talk about um, some of your experiences first. Let's start off with strategy. Like, what are some of the key components that you see with foundation, like we were talking about before, with brands, whether it's a personal brand or whether it's a big brand? So you want me to talk about foundations mm -hmm. of strategy, okay. so. One of the things that, uh, there's a couple of questions you want to ask that are very fundamental. Uh, you want to ask, what's your offering? So whether you're a company or uh, an individual, uh, what is it that you do that's, that's really good and that you offer people uh, that's different from other folks? So what's your offering? Who are, who's your audience? So whether that's a, a person or a company, who you're talking with, what do they want? So what's their motivations, not just their, their you know, technical interests. You know, the, this is not a fill in the blank exercise. Mm -hmm. This is a think it through, really examine, you know, go behind it. Don't just you know, go to the automatic checklist, uh, really think. So what's your, who is your audience? What do they want, their motivations? What do you want? Which is also not a dumb question to ask because a lot of times people think that their customer service and, you're not, and, and, and it, you should be customer oriented, you should be customer focused, but you also need to be internally focused as well. And you also need to be clear about what you want in the business, especially for a small business person uh, when they get pretty nuts as far as um, you know, making it completely inseparable from their lives. Believe me, I know this for, for a personal experience, you too. <laughs> It's very easy to overlap the two, but keep going. So uh, what do they want, what do you want, and where's the match of interest? When do people say, I really want to do business with you? And you actually have a couple of things that you like to say about those, uh, those fundamental foundation things about uh, fit and trust and, mm -hmm. you know, what do you, mm -hmm. how, how do you talk about that? Great question. So a couple of things I wanted to hit on with that too, you guys. It's um, interesting enough with 
like the more clear, like I love what Joel said, because the more clear you are on what you want yeah. and your own pain points, like for example, when I made the transition from corporate, from being a chief audit exec, I, and then into being an entrepreneur, I wasn't clear yet exactly what I wanted mm -hmm. because I had been so embedded, like many of us, into what I didn't want yeah. and focusing on what I didn't want. So it took some time to really get to know myself and what I really, really wanted. And I realized I wanted creative freedom. I realized I wanted um, freedom of time. Oh. And I realized I also wanted expression, but to also serve people in those avenues. To basically, in the points that I talk about yeah. with strategy or with foundation in stories, and especially on social media, and really, really like, and not even just social media, but also even on your website or in different avenues, with either a personal brand or making a corporate brand relatable is passion, meaning why are you doing what you're doing? Yep. Why do you love it? Purpose, what have you overcome, which goes back to the why, and then how can you help serve other people from those areas of integrity? Yeah. You, like for example, in our case, we talk about health, we talk about money, we talk about business, which obviously can sound like a lot, but taking that down to the tactical level, like 12 foundational themes, but then simplifying it. Because someone may come to us for tips on a website. Someone may come to us on tips on jumpstarting health. But then somebody may say, well, wait a minute, you're answering all this in an aspect of convenience, which is exactly what I want. Because that was another thing that I realized in overcoming my own health or my own business or my own wealth, I went to this coach or this program or this. And but I it wasn't integrated. It wasn't integrated. Yeah. And I realized the pain and the investment and the time and the money that I went through. And somebody once compared me to a pit bull, surprisingly. <clears throat> and I realized, I said, oh my God, this is why most people quit. Because we make it as humans overly complex, even at the foundational level. Do you know the difference between a, a pit bull and a buckhead mother? What is it? A pit bull knows when to let go. Mm. Interesting. You're welcome. <laughs> In case you guys are wondering about that, thanks for joining you guys. Yes. So, so yeah, so that's some of those aspects. So in thinking about that, Joel, like in your case, when you think about the foundation, when you think about the simplicities, and you've worked also with tons of brands, and you know, in case you guys couldn't tell, he's you know from New York. <gasps> oh, good one. Good one. I spilled water on my on my. Uh, I get very expressive, you guys. It's okay. It, my computer will survive. This is the magic of. Being alive. <laughs> and this is the magic of being behind the scenes. You see the real that happens. Yeah. And so you can see like none of us that show up you guys and do lives or do podcasts like we're all human You see half my face cut off on the live and it's perfect <laughs> So in case uh, in case there's uh, any flooding where you are, it's because you spilled some water and so Everything's good. <laughs> <laughs> everything's good. It's water. It's not coffee. That's what matters. Yeah. The magic of digital transforms We actually can flood uh, your abode or office. Yes. So back to the question, since we got a little like distracted here. Good one. Uh, thank you. I just, just call me Grace. That's what I always like to say. <laughs> now let's say Grace. <laughs> Grace. Grace. Please. Yes. So back to like what you find, like where do you find, like we were talking about this earlier before we got live with you guys, yeah. the coachability of clients. If yeah. they're open to feedback that, hey, maybe we need to tweak the foundation of your brand or yeah. what you're presenting or how you're presenting your story, yeah. how you're connecting with the consumer. Yeah. Well, wow, it's a couple of points and, and, it, and they're good points. They're foundational things. Mm -hmm. They're strategic. They are, um, they are branding expressions. And so, so I'll just say a couple things about it. Um, so many times I've got a new client that I've been working with for a couple of weeks and a, one that's about to come on. And in both cases, they have messaging that's sort of almost there. It's like um, my consulting mentor, Robert Fritz, used to have this expression. He used to say, uh, it, you know, what you have right now is like three day old milk. Hmm. It's not quite good enough to drink, but it's not quite bad enough to throw out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, I'm moving a little bit on this because you're too, too close. Uh, but uh, so it, it, when you have something that's not good enough to drink and not bad enough to throw out, mm -hmm. you need to you need to think about that again. So um, if you can tweak, sometimes it's a brand refresh. It's not just a whole branding. Sometimes it's not just a whole strategy. But it's just like let's work on this a little bit to uh, refine, refine it. it. Yeah. 
Jinx. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so if you can do that, uh, a lot of times you go from good to great just pretty simply. You, you know, in a week or two, you can actually kind of change that uh, because you're refining the message. It's mostly there, but you haven't quite put it together. You just reminded me of. Have you read the book uh, Three Feet from Gold? No. It's really good. Yeah, good stuff. So. Um, it's almost like a extension of Think and Grow Rich, where there's a lot of stories and entrepreneurial stories. Yeah. And the founder of um, Fields Cookies, or Cookie Fields, Fields Cookies, um, she talks about that good is never good enough. Like you're always evolving, and yeah. like how you said, going from good to great, but then today's great isn't necessarily tomorrow's good. Yeah, I, I'll, while I believe in that fully, the iconic. I'll also say mm -hmm. that sometimes you say adequate is adequate. Mm -hmm. It's got to be real, good is not good enough, and adequate is adequate. Yes. That's contradictory. There are a lot of contradictions. Mm -hmm. In that, life that and in marketing. Have. Exactly. Yeah. And that's okay. I mean, if you look at it, for example, Coca Cola, or you look at Apple, you know, as an example, or even Waffle House, they're totally different brands, totally different industries, but they've developed their staple, yep. and the market recognizes them and trusts them. Sure. So, uh, so for example, you also talk about obviously standing out, engaging, and we talked about some of the four aspects of you know foundation of stories, like what I talked about: passion, purpose, people, and profits. Then what also comes to mind is um, the second thing that I had on um, content, like all the different types of content, so that you can create. But first, before we transition into that, anything else you wanted to add or high points on strategy or on branding and things that people should be aware of, whether it's personal or medium to big size business? Yes. Um, a thought that comes to mind right away is that this is a, a consulting principle that I learned from uh, my super mentor, Robert Fritz. The um, always have a place to go. So if you know what your next step is beyond the one that's coming up, like where is this really going? Then the steps that you take to get there overall are going to be a lot stronger. So strategically, if you think about, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, share a principle mm -hmm. uh, from my consulting methodology. Mm -hmm. we, the concept is called structural tension. Mm -hmm. So imagine there's a rubber band here, and you're going here. This is where I'm going. I have this stretched out rubber band. I, I know you can't see it because it's not here, but imagine, and and and. This is where I'm going, my goal, my vision, my, my desired end result, and where this is on the other end of, of the rubber band is current reality. Mm -hmm. What's going on right now? I love this. Okay. Yes, I it. totally relate. I'll go strong, I'll go Keep further going. with it. Okay, Keep so, going. So, here, so, here, so, here. so let's use a, a ridiculous example at first. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to go from where we are in Buckhead to a perimeter mall. Mm -hmm. How do I do it? Is there, is there an absolute way to do it? Correct. There's several different ways to get there. Of course. Yeah, just like with anything. But as you take the steps to get there, it's going to ref you're, you're going to refine, I don't want to say limit, but we're going to refine our steps. So let's say we are here in Buckhead. If we were to jump on 400, that might be one way to do it. Correct, but then depending on the time of day, it may not be wise to do it. Absolutely. So, so you might refine that right away. You might mm -hmm. go local streets, you might go 400. You mm -hmm. might, if you're really close to it, you might jump on it and take the traffic anyhow. Mm -hmm. you, as you get closer, you'll, the, the current reality will change. So the step that I take to triangulate and get into that place that I want to go at Perimeter Mall is going to change. Same thing in business. Yep, I right. love that. Okay. So, Desired and result, goal, vision, call whatever you want, mm -hmm. and, current. And, and, and current reality. The current reality, because reality is really changing, just like it was changing in the, in the driving example. Yep, because you're it, taking action and you're actually in the car. You got it. So, so if you hear that, you guys, you're actually driving, you're not paralyzed. Okay. So, so, <laughs> so, 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 um, so um, when you are paying attention to where you are and where you're going, you're going to be taking action that's most efficient at that point, just like in the driving example. Based on what you know and the information. So, 100%. So what happens is so many times in companies and in people's personal branding or whatever, they think very linearly. They think they've got to take the next step. They've got it laid out a certain way. You know what? As much as that sort of makes sense, oh boy, you got it. I knew you got it. As much as it makes sense, um, when you're actually paying attention to where you're going and where you're at, 
you are actually starting to adjust to the most efficient path. So your next step in the linear game makes no sense. Make no sense. To most people, to a lot of people looking at it from a logical standpoint, let's take Jeff Bezos with Amazon. When he was making certain strategic steps, yeah. 10, 20, 30 years ago, people thought he was insane. Yeah. Or when Amazon was losing money hand over fist, people thought he was insane. Now, fast forward to 2019, people think he's genius. So, G so uh, Jeff went from uh, doing all kind, making all kinds of junky decisions to showing his junk, which is completely Being weird. Being the proof. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Bad, no, no, it's bad, bad joke. <laughs> no, it's so, fine. Uh, okay. Fine. So, um, New York. So, forget about it. We'll, we'll blame it on New York. We'll blame it on New York. So, um, so when you are strategically aligned to where you want to go, and you have that as the overall driving the GPS. force, you got it. Uh, when you have that going, the steps that you take will be most efficient. So you're going to have the stretched out rubber band, and that's a concept that, that's called in this work structural tension. Mm -hmm. I am not where I want to go, I am here, and that's okay, that's how you create anything. Mm -hmm. You go from where you, where you are to where you want to go. So as I get closer, the tension in the rubber band stretches out. When I'm further away from the it's rubber very band, tight. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's more tension, and which is also can be very good because it has a lot of energy. And it also forces us to massively pay attention to the things that aren't aligned. You got it. That's personal and our business. That's right. Because I'll take it back just as a second, you guys. I'll take that back massively when I was 55 pounds overweight. There was a lot of tension there. You were 55 pounds overweight? Yes. Wow. Five years ago. Okay. And then I constantly yo-yoed. So it was a constant tension. Right. But I wasn't able with the, the current information I had and the current system I previously had yes. to overcome that. Yes. Versus five years ago, putting together the pieces with herbal life nutrition, with meal bags, with the system, with learning how to eat, with yes. nutrients, I got there. Then the same thing with business. It was like, okay, I have all this experience from a personal standpoint with, you know, as a CPA, in oil and gas, in consulting, in retail, and it's like, okay, but logically this makes no sense. What am I doing with my life? Is it wasted? Exactly. But then I realized, wait a minute, I want to create an all-in-one lifestyle brand, but in the beginning there was this massive tension. We hosted our first event here, Fitness Fuses with Fashion, with Athleta, with Nike, donated to this children's shelter, great turnout, etc. Uh, our institute was involved, but then I realized, okay, wait a minute. You can only give so much to help end homelessness, the vision, help battered women, military vets, if you only do charity events. If you make more money and you implement those strategies, those structures, those systems that you did for corporate before yeah. to generate you know, six, seven plus figure results, you can actually impact, we can impact more people. So then there was still tension. Then the next tension, but it started to loosen was, okay, what are the revenue streams? What does that look like? How do you put together an all-in-one? But then it looked like, okay, well, I want time freedom. I want location freedom. How do I automate? What systems do I look for? So then it became you know, research. And then even once you figure out the systems, it's okay, implementation. And then it became, okay, money, well, great. You've made all these results for other people. You got up to this level yourself, but then you have chaos and money, worthiness issues and money. Are you, when I say you, I mean me, and I'm sure some of you relate or resonate. And, and, it, and it went back to alignment. It's like, well, I made all these decisions on a route to a GPS where I didn't want to go because I didn't listen to myself. It's an important observation, and I'm dying to tell you about <laughs> another way of describing what you just said. Go ahead. Okay, this is kind of a cool idea. Remember I told you about the rubber band, mm -hmm. right? I'm going to turn the rubber band like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a concept called, stru this is called structural tension, mm -hmm. where you go from where you are to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. That structural tension is it's very clear, it's, it's aligned, it's when you have the whole picture and you're taking the steps that go from where you want to go. The other thing... Alignment is one of my favorite words. This is called... Yeah, me too. Uh, this is called structural conflict. Okay. okay. So imagine, I'm trying to get this in the, in the, in the frame here. Okay? I'll just move. No, no, you, don't have to, you don't have to. So imagine you're in a room, the room is this big, and you're in the middle of the room. Okay, so you're in the middle of the room. And you have this rubber band from you to the wall in front of you, and the wall in front of you is your goal. 
So as you move towards the wall in front of you. The front sight focus is you, what some call it. Yeah, I like it. All right, and so you, you, but that's a single rubber band when you move towards that. Imagine also in the middle of the room, you've got a second rubber band attached to you, and that's your relief system or your tactical crap that ain't working. Yes. Or whatever is not working. It's your shifting literally neural pathways. Like that. Except this, this is like the neural pathway part that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So you've got this limitation. You've got this goal, you've got this limitation. Two rubber bands. Okay? In, in opposite directions. You're in the middle. What happens with two rubber bands tied around your waist on the walls in opposite directions? As you move towards your goal, what happens? You know the answer to this. Your tension is increasing on the back end. And what happens when you get sucked back into that? You, you go further from the goal. You further from the goal. You want it. And you can get closer, you get close to the goal. Oh God, yeah, but I, I'm limited. I can't do it. I, you know, blah, blah, blah. so so what, so you get into this whole thing yo -yo. Where, where you yo-yo, and I and, and this is part of why I wanted to say because you, you mentioned yeah, yo -yo the yo-yo with health, yo-yo with business that people have, the yo-yo with money. It all goes back to exactly what you're talking about: the tension towards the vision, but you haven't yet shifted those neural pathways and those beliefs that have been ingrained for years. Hundred percent. So what happens is you're yo-yoing. You're, you're going back and forth, and in, uh, in, in my mentor is a vernacular, it's, it's, it's oscillation, like a fan. It goes back and forth, that oscillation. So you're going back and forth, and what happens with most people, you, me, and everybody mm -hmm. else, mm -hmm. is we get comfortable with this middle zone. Because we don't like to get jerked around. Because there's a lot of jerking happening. Yeah, oh boy, it's really serious. <laughs> when you're up leveling. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, so, you know. Because you're screwing around with your internal structures of your thinking. So you're really you're, you're really reshifting your brain. You are doing that. So and, and you're and you're 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 um, walking the tightrope, and all of a sudden the tightrope isn't there anymore. You know what just happened? You're just walking on air, literally. Yeah. Well, and it's funny that you say that because one of the things I've realized because before years ago I would see a vision and I would keep going and I would be very and at certain points because of that tension I would be very frustrated, but I would move towards what I wanted, very frustrated. Versus now, I've learned not only to do it for my own sanity, but to also be an example for others. It's okay, let me move towards here, but let me recognize and realize what's happening with the faulty belief system. Mm -hmm. Let me rewire by journaling, by speaking, by writing, by being around community. That's, by making choices. That are really hard. Yes, that are completely yeah. different. Because yeah. my life looks totally different now than seven years ago. Yeah. And let me then recognize and realize the self-sabotaging behaviors that yeah. I was doing sure. in order to reshift. And, and I go through this review process in the moment. I go through it on a deeper dive on a weekly basis and then I reshift. For example, last week I realized, I said, wait a minute, I've been very engaged on social, on this, on that. I've been very in it. And I realized I hadn't created the space to reshift for myself and that, that I needed and wanted uh -huh. a two day break from social media, a two day break from email mm. to re-energize the cre creativity and to re-energize the alignment. Uh -huh. And then I also realized through that space created- Wait, you refocused on the goal again. And, I, and then I also realized through that goal focus was how can I simplify? Yeah. How can I make sure and pay attention to who I'm aligning with or those the kind of people I want to be aligned with. Because if not, I'm not communicating or doing or I'm being something different. And, and who do you have to throw a net over and get rid of? You and, know? and speaking of which, clearing the clutter to say, okay, some circumstances in the moment can suck, whether it's health related, money related, business related, but how can I still love myself unconditionally and give myself grace? Mm. But how can I shift those behaviors? So for example, in health, that's aligning, you know, healthy choices, at least one, two, five choices, whatever it is for you guys. But I realized in those two day breaks, I said, wait a minute, I'm cluttering up my schedule. I'm, I'm putting so much pressure on myself to get to that destination that I'm recreating that frustration, that chaos again that I did seven years ago. So that, that observation that you're making relates to something that, that a phrase that I picked up recently that I'm using all the time now. Okay. I have this back in my head. When I find myself getting nervous or weird or, or out of kilter, whatever, um, in, in, in any kind of situation, I ask myself this question, who am I being right now? Perfect. Because it's right now. Yeah. And it'll change, it's just hysterically, I'll, I sometimes will be very sympathetic and go, oh honey, you know, how are you? Da, da, da. 
a lot of times I won't. You know, I just don't buy into it. And they don't really care that much. They're just used to the pattern of, of like screaming and crying and getting attention. How about I go, you know, what I'll do is uh, I'll do a, um, what do you call it, like a disruption, right? Yes. So, but it's, it's a Joel disruption. So, so what I'll do is they're coming at me screaming with tears rolling at their eyes and they go, wait a second, I got this really cool idea. What if there's like a circus and yeah. you just make something so up? Something Some random. other visual. Yeah. Totally random. Totally random, but totally that disrupts and gets their focus right. on something else. So I'll do that. And I said, remember the circus? Remember how much fun you were having with whatever I say? It doesn't even matter what I say. Yes. And, and, then, and, then, I'll, and then I'll go, how about we do this now? And by the time they we forgot. do that, they've started their Completely. Gone. Right. Because it's, it's interesting that you say that because exactly what you said, it's a pattern. When we are a certain way as an adult, right. nine times out of 10 is directly related to someone you spent a ton of time with in yeah. your life that they projected a pattern onto you that you accepted without even thinking about it. Right. Or being conscious of it. Right. Until it no longer serves in the direction you want to go or who you want to be around. It winds up shifting into being an operating system like a computer. Literally. And yeah, literally. Literally. And, and, and it's how we operate. Um, I did I did some, uh, so, so one of the things that I do in business and in personal consulting is, is I get to the people's underlying pattern. And I, I work with a woman who I know very well, mm -hmm. and I've known her for years, and she wanted to have me do this program with her. So um, when we stripped away all the layers of junk that she had about why she was failing at a particular business project, it wound up being about a personal thing that she had to be vital in everything that she did, and that she had to grab it like this. You control it. And, and, and it looked I like control. You. It did look like control, like this, right? But what was behind it inside here was I have to be vital. I have to contribute. And if I don't contribute, then what's gonna happen? And you know what? I know it's kind of crazy, but when we're digging in and stripping away the we layers, all have layers in our heads, deep in our hearts, deep mm -hmm. in our psyche, deep in our operating system, mm -hmm. what we stripped away here was a remarkable thing. I said to her, what happens if you can't be vital? What happens if you can ask your teenage son, did you take your lunch with you today? Come on, he knows how to take his lunch. Your husband knows how to do the same mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, <clears throat> why does it have to be, you know, this craziness? Mm -hmm. No, I like... And she answers, you know what she answers? Mm. She says, she, she, she doesn't answer, and I got this intuitive flash. And I have, it was a lucky mm -hmm. one maybe. Mm -hmm. And I say, I got this image of tumbleweeds on the desert. Mm -hmm. And I'm not exactly sure why. And she starts crying. Interesting. So it's like her subconscious was telling her, like, in a way that she's ha still had this ingrained, like, visual of being a tumbleweed alone. And I picked up on it. Yep. So what did tumbleweed mean? That I, I, would, I would dry up, I'm alone, yep. I would blow mm -hmm. away. I have to be I don't violent. matter. I don't matter. So it's somewhere, fun. somehow, somebody planted that through a series of actions, which I'm sure nine times out of ten, you know, hurt people, hurt people, or, you know, our parents or the people that have raised us did the best they could. Right. And like, even in my case, you know, I had one thing that was said to me when I was 12 mm. that I realized years later that was literally like, it was like that 12 year old Katrina and that belief that had been buried and yeah. planted yeah. was controlling have you done so landmark? many actions. Have you done landmark? No, I haven't done landmark. A okay. lot of my mentors have. So I, I, I've done yeah. landmark, I've mm -hmm. done technologies for creating, I get both of yep. things, things for both. Yep. And getting, I've done similar though. Getting that, it's, it's different ways of getting at an underlying mm -hmm. pattern. A root. You and, have to get the root. And when you get it, when you clear it away, you, not, you may not necessarily get rid of it for life. But you're very aware of it. That's the thing. You're very aware, and then you're also very. Uh, you start to become, like you said, we're like onions and the layers. Where I recognize now more and more is those potential self sabotaging behaviors much yeah. faster. Yeah, 100%. Where, you know, like for example. And that, that's, that, is, that is the goal. That's the goal. The best, the best, you know, best thing to come out of it. When it's becoming aware that that neural pathway has been there and those behaviors that you've done as a result of that belief has been there for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Yeah. So it's giving yourself that grace to say, okay, I'm literally rewiring my brain. So it's going to take some time, like riding a bike. Yeah to shift those behaviors yeah. and then I'm going to become aware of new behaviors like what I just talked about with even my business schedule realizing well wait a minute why am I cluttering so much back to back let me create more space let me create you know flexibility but let me create you can engineer it 
let me create flex you know we've got the automation we've got different things but when i meet with people let me create space in between in case something happens mm -hmm. like an impromptu episode to film and take a little bit more time because my next meeting wasn't until two and same thing with yours <laughs> so you know having that flexibility speaking of which do you want to talk some about content creation and we'll kind of focus there and wrap up sure as far as like sharing so like with the foundation having the stability having like the vision of the brand strategy brand yes having the aspect of strategy brand and moving towards clarity right because it's an ongoing process uh -huh. In some cases you arrive and you get there, i.e. an apple, but in some cases as a small entrepreneur or just figuring out your brand or a brand refresh, once you get to that point, then it's figuring out, okay, how do I communicate this via content, via podcast, via social media, um, via landing pages to speak to the person from a place of what they may want results in you know business results in marketing like in your case in some of your avenues um with in case you guys are curious as far as joel's website and i'll include this in the show notes is marketpoweronline.com and then in case of you know in our case helping people create what they love but also helping them get to the root of the mindset then shifting the aspects and simplifying health, money, business, and travel so that they can create what they love and they see a pathway that it's not complicated, but having that aspect of those communications. So like you guys see in our cases, we'll share stuff about a live. We'll share stuff about a podcast feature. We'll share stuff with stories because like we're an all in one platform. So in no way, shape or form, is it just me? It's stories of different people. It's features of different people. It's integrations of different tools. So like all those different things. And we talked about this earlier, the integration. So just to like summarize all that. So as you see people that are super clear or they've gotten, they've started to take the steps towards brand refreshes or towards being clear on their mission and vision. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag first world problems, like we always like to say. And as you get clear, you see they're starting to move towards that level of clarity. Then what are your takes on content creation and where do you see maybe some of your clients or you, what are the best avenues for you on platforms and why? It, it covers so much ground. Yeah. So, so I like to make questions broad. No, way, like no, no way that I can do all that. So, <laughs> so, so, so I'll, I'll try some. So um, Whatever comes to mind is perfect. Yeah, yeah. So, so it, it, what comes to mind is foundation that where we started and, and really the same you know, initial questions that I ask in any strategic or branding conversation, like, what do you offer? Uh, who you're, who you're, uh, who do you engage with? Uh, what do they want? What do you want? Where's their match? Mm -hmm. So, if you're thinking about like, why do people engage with you? What, why do they really care? Um, if if you think about that, it's going to inform your choices about how I want to run my business, how I want want to run my life, mm -hmm. what goes on overall, mm -hmm. and like you said, do I schedule to drive myself crazy or do I schedule to do a good job and and keep things moving and and serve my clients and you know all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and and you know do we make mistakes yeah do of we course. you know but, but, but like you say hashtag I'm human I, I I'll remember that one too <laughs> so uh, remember remember I'm human okay got it um, um, our hashtag I'm perfectly human or perfectly imperfect I like it you know so so uh, but at the same time as imperfect as we might be when we still have a GPS to steer by, the same going back to the perimeter mall, mm. if anybody was yes. listening, for an hour you must be nuts and have nothing no. better to do. <laughs> but, we're having a really good conversation. I, so I like engaged. it, 100%. <laughs> you know, but you'd have to be catching it at the beginning. So, you know. No, so, not necessarily. We're still giving good value points throughout, I would think. Yeah, yeah but, but if they tune in. Oh, that's right, the GPS point. That's right, that's right. right. Keep yeah, going. Yeah, so uh, they may not have yes, remembered it. Yes, that's true. The GPS in your car gets you to where you want to go. Yeah. And, and as you make a series of turns, and even if you make a bad turn, it'll still take you back to where you want to go if you have a clear idea where you're going. Mm -hmm. So that will inform content, because what's content supposed to do? It's supposed to bring people to you because you're offering something of value in that area. Exactly. And the only thing, you know, the only say, the thing about content, you can jump into that, this too, that comes to mind is I think content has evolved to the point where it's not just having general generic junk about content, but more like content that really helps the customer journey or your business journey or both, where you're actually evolving in a very specific way. Not just da 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 da. There's enough, there are enough social media posts on Instagram, Facebook, and wherever else 
um, so that you can have a lifetime of, uh, of, of stupid comments and things that are said that are great. But man, you know, let's get to the point and let's move it along. Very, it's maybe, and is it valuable? Yeah. Like, is it adding value? To, so, so part of what, like in the beginning, so I'm going to back up actually, I'm going to back up to two points that triggered something. I'm going to back up to the GPS comment because you just triggered something that Thanks. is hugely valuable. So a couple of things. So beginning vision was all in one lifestyle brand, right? Yeah. Helping people simplify health, wealth, business, create what they love, which obviously in the beginning was super overwhelming because yeah. it's like, well, what does that mean? Yeah. Well, it's like, take the next one to three steps and then the next steps get revealed. Right. Well, logically, so I was marinating on this a lot recently. Marinating. Huh? Marinating. Yeah, I was marinating. Like, kind of like, you know, like dressing on the salad. Like <laughs> <laughs> so I was marinating on this recently, you guys, because keep in mind, it's very easy to look back, but we don't, uh, like one of my mentors, Garen Jones, talks about this. It's very, um, and he's actually done landmark. Oh. Um, it's hard to see the picture when you're in the frame. Well, when I, nice. good, right, great. When I first started Fit Life Creation, so initially, like I told you, we started the you know the fundraiser event, yeah. and then I realized, wait a minute, revenue streams, strategy, structure, systems. Well, first we went and created retreats. So I jumped to retreats, then from retreats because we had a lot of influencers attend, and I had already gotten results, like what I shared earlier about the 25x factor on Facebook alone. Yeah. So I started recognizing the power of story and authenticity and value on social media. So then with that information, then the retreats and influencers and bloggers coming and then sharing that they struggled with money, they struggled with business. I was like, wait a minute. When, when you integrate all the things that you're talking about and you integrate all the things that I'm talking about and you put it into one big ball, yeah. you got the game. Of course. You know. but, and then I realized at that point, because it's, it's, it's high level and it's low level, not low level, it's just, Vision Detail. and strategic, strategic and tactical. You got it, 100%. And the people don't like to use tactical anymore. I love tactical. Tactical is one. It's the how to. And, and, people, and implementation. People think that everything is strategic. That's no. like That's like everything is white, green, or blue. It's, no. it's not. No, you've got to get, like, it's like the vision and then diving. It's like a funnel, right? Like to use like marketing, to, you know, legal. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you have the funnel and you've got to drill down into the focal point and the how to and the detail. All well, the strategy in yeah. the world doesn't help if the no. tactical execution doesn't work. If, if it sucks. So I realized. And all the tactical execution doesn't work if you don't have like a strategy. And the big picture. And so I realized, wait a minute. And then also paying attention to the intuition and the steps along the way that we never know it all. Never. Yeah. And we have value, but we never know it all. And I said, wait a minute, they have all this massive value. They have this huge following on Instagram. I see all these brands doing one-off, what I call, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, one night stand collaborations on Instagram. I said, what if we created a platform where we help people get healthy, make money and build brands long-term. Mm. And I went back to my old days as a CPA and return on investment yeah. and the long-term gain. Yeah. And I said, what if we did that? And then from there started the trajectory to go to creating a press platform. And in the last year, you guys, we worked with, and I didn't mention this, over 3,000 influencers, 2,500% ROI, which is unheard of. And that's just the first, and now we're like on 15 platforms. And then I realized, wait a minute, so, you know, and then the steps, I said, but wait a minute, not everyone is going to be an influencer. How do I connect more with the consumer? So that's when we created more of a robust platform across social media. You guys can download our free social media in a day series um, under the freebie. So then I realized, wait a minute, we've got the blog. Let's, let's focus on social channels step by step. Let's set up a podcast. Because today, more people tune into podcasts than are reading blogs. And so, but then looking backwards and then the revenue stream started to develop step by step from that. And now looking backwards, I'm like, it would have been logical to set up freebies, social, then podcast, then the intro offer, then at XYZ up to the high end offer, then the press platform. But you know, as an entrepreneur, and I'm sure in your journey and your client's journey, and like you said, sometimes you'll jump because that's the right step right now. It doesn't necessarily make logical sense, but at the end, it makes sense. Well, like you were saying about being imperfectly human, sometimes you'll jump around and even you'll be a little off, but if overall you're moving in the right direction, it doesn't matter that the ship moved a little bit one side to the other. As long as you're going overall in the right direction, it's fine. You can't beat yourself up to be perfect on a personal level. You can't beat yourself up to be perfect on a, on a company level. 
you know. The grace. That's what it is. And then the second comment I wanted to make, which I loved, relating back to your content creation. So in the beginning, like a lot of my experience, like many of us, with branding and marketing and strategy was like corporate, right? Yeah. But then I started seeing all these amazing examples from influencers on Instagram and sharing so, being so open yeah. and behind the scenes. But I still went within and I said, okay, what do I want my own personal brand to be as Katrina? And what do I want to share? And then what do I want the Fit Life Creation brand to be? And what do we want to share there? Yep. And then how do those integrate over time, right? Or how do they make sense for people to see the connection? But then exactly to what you said, the evolution. Like I realized the beginning of 2019, I want to do more behind the scenes. I want to do more stories. We just started featuring middle of last year podcast features. I realized I wanted to show more behind the scenes of the how we get there. Uh -huh. Like the setup on different workshops, the, the post event, the testimonials, people in the experience, during the experience. So it evolves. Yeah. And then people see whether they're a consumer or they, and, you know, they're an influencer or they want to join into our influencer platform or a brand that, that's valuable content along the way. Because then even if they never contact us or you, in any way, like when they look at your site or anything, you know, and vice versa, you know that you still served in alignment with where you want to go. Amen, sister. <laughs> <laughs> we um, went to uh, church, in case you right. didn't know. Like, what? I said we went to church. In we case went to church, church, just for a minute. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and we should also make a note also, too. Um, we discussed right before we actually started doing this ridiculous, like spontaneous, cool thing, whatever, I don't know what it is. But I'm uh, having a good time with it, and it was lovely to do it. They were both creative analyticals. So we jump around from a creative expression to a strategic expression, and we jump right back in and out of things like left and right, and it's just crazy fast. And, and so, I love that you mentioned that. that. I love that you mentioned that because, yeah. like, and I'm sure you find this too, Joel. Yeah. And for you, fellow creative slash analytical people, that. You recognize when you met like your community or your tribe because they totally get you yeah. and they go back and forth with you versus you can tell when eyes glaze over or someone's like, wait, what? Like you scare me and you've lost me. Yeah. And it's like, okay, wait, like I had a conversation yesterday with a potential brand um, to be a retainer with. And she's also a solo entrepreneur, but she's built this amazing like platform with operations. Uh -huh. And she, and she wants assistance with like basically a influencer platform. Yeah. And I was sharing with her the foundations, like what we talked about on this episode, the stability and the growth. And I was sharing her painting the vision of her going on video and her whatever. And she interjected and she was like, and she's very lovely, very engaging, but I then realized it's one-on-one. -on -one. And she's like, just let me know. Right. Like I love your energy and I yeah. love this and I love that. But she's like, right now you're freaking me out. And I was like, she's, and I was like, because, and she's like, because it's scary for me to even do a podcast, even with my voice by myself, because I'm way more behind the scenes. And I said, you know what? I said, you don't have to be the face on the video. You can do a voiceover with the material and just be behind the scenes. That's another way to do marketing. Sure. You can start there and maybe when you're ready, progress to face to face. I said, because even though I was a public speaker, I didn't go face to face on video for quite some time. There's a lot of ways to get there, where, wherever the there is, and uh, and and you, and you just got to pay attention to where's the match between yes. what they want, what you yes. want, are you just and how can they can get there. It's like the analogy that you talked about going to Perimeter Mall. Yeah. And that's exactly, I said, let me back up from the vision. Yeah. So the creative into the, or the strategic into the tactical, I said, I'm very visionary, but I'm also very tactical. I said, let me back up. For those of you who are headed to the Perimeter Mall now, we are sorry to create this massive traffic jam. There are thousands of people that are now rushing to Perimeter Mall because we've been going, using this example. It's only an example. Yeah, don't go. Okay. Don't, don't go. go. Don't, don't go to Perimeter Mall, please. Don't go. Don't go. So, so I, because I, I recognize that, yeah. and I told her, I said, you know what? I'm grateful that you yes. were vulnerable. Yes. That you shared that with me. I said, but listen, I'll paint the vision for you. You don't have to do it in the way and the examples that I'm sharing. And I told her that. So let me back up. I said, we can start with they totally want to make one to three steps. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I said, because you're not going to get here to the potential for you. It might be a 5, 10, 20 year vision. Get another, okay. get another spokesman. Uh, learn a different skill. Exactly. Uh, do something different. There's 10 different ways. Do stand up comedy and, and present your company that way. I mean, yes. who cares? I mean, there's so many things you could do. Yes. You know, as long as you're fulfilling an interest and a need, uh, you know. And value. 
That's 100%. Yep. Awesome. I have loved this conversation, Joel. This is yeah. like the third we met, like I mentioned, for those of you that just tuned in at Atlanta Tech Village at Circle of Firms. He spontaneously showed up for my social steroids workshop today. One out of over 10 people that signed up. It's raining, it's cold in Atlanta, you know. That's why I'm going like this. Yes, all the time. and it's actually the air is in here, it's you guys. Really it's freezing. Here, yeah. Yes. But it's so, keeping us alert and yes, not falling asleep. Yes, yes. So thank you so much, Joel. And <laughs> thank you for being open. And anything else you want to share and or where could they can find you? Uh, they can find me right here. If you're here, if you're not here, it'll have to be somewhere else. Uh, Market Power Online is my place, so your place is fitlifecreation.com and or Instagram. You guys are tuning in at, at Katrina Julia Katrina Fit. Julia, Joel Alpert, find us wherever you find us. Yes, and yeah. all of his social handles are also on his website too. Like that. Yes. And any other words of wisdom that you want to share? Uh, wear clean underwear. You know, you never know when you could get into a traffic accident. Not that we're wishing it on you, but you know, just be practical <laughs> you know, about your life. You know, it's very important. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> thank you so much, Joel, and thank you guys for joining, and thank you for tuning Thanks. in on the podcast and on the show, and feel free to comment, tag a friend, and share. Thanks, guys.